work beer. Am I allowed to drink it? Yeah. Yeah. Crack it open. Let's do it. Okay. That's why we get on these things. Hello, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to week one, uh, the inaugural OG episode of Around the Hub. My name is Rick Dunn, and every week uh, we will be live at nine o'clock uh, on Tuesdays, Eastern Time. At least that's the plan for right now. Um, leading a, a roundtable style discussion, highlighting the, the very small, very niche world of the FedEx line hall contractor. And, and really the unique successes, the unique opportunities, the unique challenges that this community that we face. Um, the idea is to create an environment uh, where business owners, both experienced and new, can interact, uh, share best practices with each other, um, potential new contractors, you're know, looking for information, looking to, to join us uh, in this space, um, the, the multitude of vendors that, that are you know, assisting. <laughs> In, in really everything, um, the drivers, the, the AOs, the BCs, um, FedEx employees potentially, uh, to create an environment where the information can be shared freely, uh, transparently, honestly, and most important, in my opinion, fact-checked by the rest of the community. Um, why in the world does the line hall community need an hour a week to share alpha, uh, talk about the state of the industry. Um, for one, I just got this new camera, so how could we not take advantage of this opportunity? Um, but two, there's a demand and there's a need for it. Um, last fall, we did a, a boot camp for new contractors. Um, every Monday, we have several brand new, just you know, put in their BD30, going through that process. Um, took those contractors through an eight-week course um, designed to really prepare them to become a contractor so that when that, that week one came, um, it wasn't this, this they're starting, it wasn't that deer in headlights, it wasn't this unfamiliar operation of their business, which could be doing you know, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars a week, um, they were better prepared. Um, in that boot camp, it went very well. Um, what started out as... 10 to 12 of us uh, turned into a, a much larger gathering by the end and very exciting, um, very unorganized at times conversations. Um, but I believe everybody who came through that process with us was significantly more prepared to run their new line hall business. And even if they didn't know like all the little nuances that you know exist, they were certainly prepared. Um, nothing was new and they knew where to go for information. A very different scenario than the, this world that I came into in 2013-14. So um, Around the Hub is a, a love child between the boot camp, um, my new camera and lighting system, and, and really a desire to share uh, these conversations with 
with the line hall community um, and a larger audience. This is interactive. Um, in the weeks to come, we'll be touching on a range of topics, all very relevant to not just you know new contractors, but all contractors, everybody. We will have on a plethora of very successful business owners, uh, vendors that have made this space more profitable and easier to excel in. Um, and the hope is to provide lots of insightful conversation that allows you to run a more profitable business. So again, uh, welcome to Around the Hub. Be excited. And with all that, I would like to welcome my very first guest uh, slash co-host of Around the Hub. You have probably seen him in one or two of our videos. Full disclosure, he is my kid's godfather. For any ladies out there, he's single. And most importantly, he is no longer unemployed because Christian will be starting his very new line hall business very soon, we hope. <laughs> Christian, what up? Uh, dude, I'm excited. I'm, I'm doing well. Uh, thanks for telling everyone I'm un unemployed finally. Listen, long, long we decided to do this at 9 o'clock at night. Hey, man, you forgot to mention official ankle breaker of yours on the basketball court. That's how we bonded 15 years ago. There's no proof. That's on record. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Now. Um, so what up, man? Um, welcome. You've been around, you know, the us, Line Out Solutions, FedEx for a bit now, right? And you finally decided to become a contractor yourself. Um, I'm very excited for you. I'm looking forward to very big things. But why FedEx Line Hall? Like what in the world brought you here? Yeah, man. So, I mean, obviously I've known you for, you know, well over a decade and you've been involved for a decade. So it was always kind of in my year FedEx has been, and I've seen how well it's treated you. So I've always been interested. And like I've spent the past decade building um, a beverage company and I've always been looking for my own thing to start. And so when I decided to step away from that, I kind of was like, Hey, where, where do I want to put my time? You know, my focus. And then I went with you to Vegas met a bunch of contractors. <laughs> mm, good, good time. time. Yeah, we had a good time. Uh, but, you know, met a bunch of contractors, knew you, and just became more and more comfortable with wanting to start my first kind of my own thing in FedEx. And I'll say this, like every line hall FedEx contractor I met that was like focusing on recruiting and just paid very much attention to their business was very happy. I'm like, that makes sense for me. Very true. Um, yeah, Vegas was a great time. Um, we it's went, group consultants put on a fantastic event, and um, it was fun. Um, and so your your background, right? A um, little more specifics, like what was your expertise in? Yeah, so um, I, um, I joined a uh, beverage company um, out based out of New York. Um, this was, you know, they were sub 100K in revenue at the time. And I kind of just started to see, you know, because I was interested in a startup. Um, and then we pretty quickly grew. So we were looking to hire and looking to place people in positions. And I headed up the finance and operations side of it. Um, so I spent about a decade building it out. And we built it to being a national distributor brand. So, you know, stores like Whole Foods, Target, Walmart, Costco, Sprouts, like aren't all those. Um, or word all those. And, you know, for me, it just kind of came to a point where I was like, all right, let me try to find something for myself to do. And that's mm -hmm. when I took last year. Okay. So we see a lot of contractors, you know, they get excited, they run through the numbers. They're like, man, this is, this is for me. Um, but what made you finally like take that leap? Like, oh my God, it's time to start spending money and, and brain power on this business. Um, it, it was kind of a fortunate situation, and quite frankly, it's because I because uh, I know you that I got into a good situation. Nepotism. Like, yeah, I just have to kind of call it what it is. Um, but it, but it goes a long way when you know someone, you have someone in your corner, um, and you know I've seen your success. I've met a bunch of people, especially in Vegas, and since then, and it just made me go, hey, like let's let's do this, let's get started. This makes sense. Um, I'll say this: the biggest like difference for me is FedEx. Um, it's kind of, you know, you have an assigned run or unassigned run, whichever one assigned, obviously like guaranteed, but, um, 
FedEx will kind of hold up their end of the bargain. So you're not doing things like chasing AR and not chasing like a bunch of big chargebacks, which is completely different in the, um, <laughs> in the, in the world of beverage. Yes. Um, that every Friday, you know, that deposit showing up, um, very convenient, especially compared to, you know, our friends in the regular trucking industry chasing down 30, 60 day, 90 AR, um, it gets rough, obviously, it's in a very cash flow specific business. So tell us about your business. What in the hell are you buying? Yeah. Um, so I'm starting out with three dedicated uh, PM solo runs uh, out of Pittsburgh. I'm very excited mm -hmm. about it. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I just want to kind of add on, you know, what we were just saying before. It's, um, you know, we we built the Birch Company to a multi-million dollar company. Um, and it was, it's always really tough to find, like, how you're going to scale something. But it became very clear, speaking to everyone and speaking to like you, how you can scale on FedEx, right? You can get growth opportunities, get um, buy team runs, solo runs. Like, there's a very clear path on how to grow. It just makes sense, for sure. And I think obviously, you know, we've done that, um, Darius and I, over the years. Um, in large part, that's why in the world I'm on the screen right now, pretending like I know something about this place. Um, and so it, it, that is for sure. So I know I'm certainly um, excited about watching you, you know, and, and with that, um, I've helped many, many people over the years now prepare for that, that limb meeting, that first interaction with the manager. And, you know, you go through the contract, you go through tips and there's, everybody has a different way of kind of preparing for it. And then there's your way. So Christian had a novel of notes written out spread out all over my basement prepping for this and i'm like what in the hell he knows more than i do about fedex at this point so yeah walk me through that prep process for that meeting yeah thanks for letting me uh, mess up your basement for a good like it was actually probably closer to a week um no the, well, the reality is like you want to be prepared obviously um and you know, when I knew I wanted to kind of take the path, I would just ask everyone and anyone I knew what their limiting was like. Um, and I just start jotting down questions. What is this? What is this? What is this? You know, and just bugged you for a good month or so. Of just how do you answer this? How do you go about it? And it's one thing to pass the limb meeting or, you know, I say pass, but like it, it is kind of like an interview to get in there. Um, but really it was, you know, just kind of getting a better understanding of what I'm going to be doing and how to do it right. Like it's the first step. And with that prep, I mean, do you feel like you're more going to be more of a competent um, line all contractor and better prepared to actually run that business? Oh, for sure. Without a doubt. Um, I think the biggest thing and anyone, this resonates with anybody who's like built a business or work really doing anything, having someone in your corner just makes the process much easier. The simplest of questions can nag you for a week, but just simply going like, hey, what is, you know, we, we had a question just come up today, which was um, uh, registering a title. It's like me texting you was like quick answer um, and it made it easy or else I was been probably been just searching for hours trying to call the DMV or something. It made it easy. I came on, you know, and I had the luxury of, we didn't have much in terms of support. We had a good relationship with the terminal, but luckily Darius and I, you know, we had each other and it was a lot of just trial and error in a large part. And we could fill a book up and maybe we will one day with all the mistakes that we made. But um, to be able to have somebody to, to bounce ideas off with, to, to kind of just release the stress, to freak out on somebody when you need to, um, I wouldn't wish somebody entering the space just going solo it would be impossible for me to do it i wouldn't have been able to succeed um if i didn't have a partner that could keep up with me um and let me you know just just take the pressures of my day off of him off of him off of me um so i think anybody coming in you know one thing i'd advise is just find that support system find other people and and luckily we have a ton of contractors right now that are willing to share their their knowledge their experience and just give honest information and and that's unique since i've been in this is a new thing this is a new thing we're seeing and, and this show we're on the hub is just designed to continue it's the next step in, in that communication process um you there? All right. 
<laughs> you what, were what from... did you call your book? Oh my God. Um, <laughs> let me, I, I don't want to answer that too quickly because I think it's an important question, but I promise I'll answer that question before the show ends. All right. So we are, you there? I don't know if you're freezing or not. Maybe it's just your face. Are you asking me? No, I'm telling you that I'm going to get back to you by the end of the show. Oh, cool. All I'm right. Here. I'm here for the whole show. Listen, thank you for being here. I love you. Um, and I'm happy you too. that you are making this journey. So with all that, um, we would like to bring on our next two guests, a couple more softballs for us since it's week one. And this was supposed to be a dress rehearsal that we decided to go live on. So obviously we stacked the deck with people that were going to say really kind things about us. Let's bring on uh, John and Darius. Hey, what's going what on? up? What's, what's up, going on? Man, y'all? Um, are you both wearing t-shirts? Did you guys plan this? This was a classy affair. Brown um, t-shirts. Yeah, we. Yeah, I sent him that yesterday, so we could wear Good. the same thing. Classy. This is thermal. This is legit. <laughs> You're right. It gives you extra it has, it has, te- it has texture. Texture. Oh. <laughs> you see, casually flex the. Oh my like, god, we we got a time. We got. We're sticking to time. We're sticking to time. Everybody, stay focused. All right, um, gentlemen. Hello. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, Darius, so I think a lot of people know who you are. Uh, they've seen our videos. You've been my business partner since 2000, 2013, 14 story. We, we tell it on YouTube. We're not going to rehash it right now. But to get you on this first episode talking about, you know, so you want to be a line hall contractor and, and that kind of entry into the business. You've seen a lot that's happening now, and you can tie it back into we came in. Tell me how FedEx has changed since since we came in, almost a lifetime ago. It's it's so similar, um, yet different. Um, you know, I'm not as involved with it as uh, as you are on a day to day basis. We're running on other stuff, um, but when I hear it, some of the, the terminology is still the same. Some of there's some new terminology. Um, and I think we've talked about this before. Like it's just, it's just different, man. It's, there's, there's so much help. There's so many assets. There's so much information. Um, you know, and I almost, I'm like a hater. Like, you know, we didn't have any of that help, if you will. Um, we just kind of figured it out and stumbled through it and ran through brick walls. And you know, um, yeah, it's just different. A lot of information. What you're doing is great for new people to figure out what they're what they need to do, you know, Lynn meetings. I mean, it was, there was no Lynn meeting when we started. It was like, hey, you want some runs? You know, I think you, you were one of the first ones who were like, actually, I don't know if everybody's experience, but in my experience, you know, you were like, hey, even how we got our runs, you know, you know how we got the runs, you went and met a, um, like a regional manager, you know, and, um, now that's kind of like commonplace, but you were like one of the first people. Like, I'm going to meet him and go, you know, suck up a little bit. I try to use, you know, use some, <laughs> clean it up, suck up a little bit to this manager, you know. So yeah, it's good. But now I think things are a lot more rigid, a lot more formalized. You know, either you're, you're doing X to get Y, or you're not going to get Y. That's what I see from now. The structure, um, and for sure, I, I remember those those wild west, those old days of like just make it run, you know, just make it happen. And obviously now, what are our conversations? Ha- you know, SRS scores, and you know, like it's it's a very different perception. I think we have, and and that's direct from Big Brother. You know, what does FedEx want? What do they need? And it's a much different world. Um, let me ask you this. Obviously, in our business, you know, I've strayed more towards the FedEx side of our business. But um, is this is FedEx Line Hall still a place for you that you'd want to invest your your time, your money, your brain power in in 2023? Yeah, I mean, like even when we have some of our nastiest you know moments, you know, we've always still kind of you know when it comes down to it, I'm like you know. What I always say, I'm never going to stand in the way of a good deal. 
And every deal that was good, we got. You know, every run that was to be had for us, we got. Um, so, yeah, if you came to me today and said, hey, we need to fly to Denver or Pittsburgh or, or wherever else we've been looking down stuff, I would absolutely go again, you know, because I've reaped the rewards and got the best. Somebody, somebody went cheap on their Wi-Fi. You reap the rewards and... Mm -hmm. I would do it again. All right. Okay. Cool. <laughs> well, in that case, let me line up some deals. All right. Who's selling? Uh, yeah. Email me. Can um, I ask you, Darius, and, and for you too, Rick, like when you guys started, how did you think about growth and would you do it the same way? <laughs> did you just go in, buy a bunch of routes? How did I, that would not, I would not do it the same way. Um, 2016... 17 we i mean it was just take whatever you could get um it was taking runs all over the place we were sloppy as hell we had way too many runs we were running single you know um team runs out of multiple states and it just got too hard and too complicated to keep track of try to recruit so many different markets just for one run it made absolutely no sense but got a little taste of, hey, you know what, if you, you get a run and you upgrade it and you package it with something else and then you can sell it. And, you know, we were selling these runs for, for more money than we ever imagined when we first stumbled into this business. And uh, if I had to do it again, I would certainly um, consolidate uh, regions and, and look at larger plots of businesses and grow that space out before just trying to do too much. And I know Darius and I, you know, almost killed each other multiple times because of that. Yeah. I mean, they were all, we didn't do it from, from like negativity. What do they say? Like, you know, um, nobody gets married to get divorced. You know what I mean? So um, nobody starts a business to fail. So all the businesses and, and the areas that we were looking at, they made sense at the time. You know, I think would I do it again, uh, have 30 plus addendum runs in eight different locations? Probably, yes. But I would cut the cord a little sooner when we found out they weren't working. Um, I think that was we really tried to, to, to make something work that ultimately didn't work. And we spent a lot of money, time and energy and trucks for, you know, a year and change and plus, I mean, the results were the same as if we didn't do it at all, you know? So can I, can I ask, would, would a fair kind of summary that be like, if you're going into it, go deep or just concentrate <laughs> on making sure you know what numbers you're getting ver versus just expanding and going wide too fast? I, I think now there's too much information and everybody's an expert. You know, I mean, I hear some of these conversations and, and still, you know, with all the information out there, you know, um, people, they're coining new phrases. You know, there was before it was uh, dedicated, unassigned and spare. Now it's uh, I heard someone on the phone with Rick with a car. They said it's spare, but it runs like dedicated or something like that. And I'm just like, you know, yeah, what I'm saying, you know, <laughs> and we, and we've, and listen. We sold the spare run. We sold the spare run. We've done it before. But th at that time, that was very relationship-based with the manager and the buyer and everything else. And that guy ran that run with that driver in that truck for almost two years. I don't think that would happen today. And you know? it, it turned into an unassigned yeah. uh, very quickly after. Yeah, but, for sure. Yeah. You know? And, you know, and not to get too technical, but there's – the whole engineering process on what you know what's unassigned versus you know when does that become spare versus unassigned and you know the, the nerds up in FedEx can probably tell you better than us and you know what it what it takes to become an unassigned run is package volume and stuff like that. So let me ask you this. Um thinking about as an entrepreneur, right? This journey we've taken, what do you think is yours or even ours, but your biggest mistake? Um, over the years as a business owner um, and maybe like how you would have handled it differently. Anything come um, to mind? Just what we said, you know, um, you know, holding on to those losers 
longer than we needed to. I mean, I can still think about, uh, I don't want to say any names, but a manager in Ohio. I know his name. I remember it. Um, you know, but uh, we got the runs. We had supposed to have three or four for free. And we ended up with like two. And the only, I think you might have won out there. And the only reason we didn't push those runs and run them was because of his attitude. He was a dickhead. Now, there were other locations that there were the same runs. They wouldn't run. They wouldn't run well. And we still tried because the managers were charming. So I think, you know, um, that type of stuff is what kind of got us in trouble, you know, growing you know, really big, really fast. And when I say really fast, it was still in, you know, two, in, in the years, in FedEx years, it was really fast. But, I mean, it was um, still two or three years before we got, I mean, like two, three trucks and two runs, five trucks and four runs, 10 runs, 17 and like 30. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't even know about the 30. My my answer would be similar, and and I thinking about it as you were talking, it's it was that the holding on to relationships um, for too long, and, and a lot of that is employee related. We've had phenomenal employees that have worked for us. We've gotten so lucky. Our first hire, you know, first ever hire, still works for us now, and he's family um, driver who turned into a master mechanic. And, and we've had great, but then we've had people that we were trying to pound, you know, that, that round peg into a square hole and they just weren't the right people for the runs or for our business. And we just tried to make it work for so long. I think now the older, wiser uh, version of, of me is just, you know, this business, your runs aren't for everybody. There are certain CDL drivers that don't belong on your runs. And that's okay because somebody has a run that does work for them. You have to work on finding drivers that are right for your business at that time because a CDL driver, just because they're really good for you right now, doesn't mean their, their situation in life can't change and they no longer become an effective employee for your business. And it's about knowing and, and having that open line of communication and, and measuring results and having data that you can attribute to really making proper decisions on how you want to run your business with drivers, with, with admins, with really anybody. So um, looking back on it, you know, I think that's the one thing that I think we probably could have been a little better serviced if we maybe would have ended some relationships quicker than, um, than we had as my ear pods just did something. So um, we're, neglect we're neglecting John. Yeah, Sorry, buddy. That's right. I was just over here eating a Chipotle burrito. Oh, you get, yeah. What'd you get? The, the sofritas? No, I like those carnitas. Mm. The story of Dr. Pepper? <laughs> <laughs> Chipotle has not sponsored uh, the show, but they are certainly welcome to. Um, <laughs> So we take it from, you know, one of my kids' godfathers to my other kid's godfather. Um, yep, softballs all around tonight. Mm -hmm. John, you have a very interesting FedEx journey. Why don't you briefly, this is time, we're keeping it under an hour, tell mm -hmm. us about your, your experiences in line hall mm -hmm. from the beginning. Yeah, um, so it was around 2018. I partnered with you and Darius Y'all had um, y'all had some runs down here, and they were a little problematic just from the geography. You guys had a lot of stuff going on. Uh, Where's here? Sorry, I'm in Georgia. So we had some runs in Florida and Georgia, and um, I took the opportunity to kind of work with you guys and partner with you to help manage some of these runs down here in Georgia. So we did those for, I don't know, maybe a couple of years or so. And uh, when the opportunity came to sell them, we took it to focus on some other endeavors, some other opportunities too. And so, fast. So let's be okay. honest about those runs. We, they weren't successful. Um, and we didn't, ha we hung on them probably too long. And what was the reason? Like in your opinion, why were those runs not successful? Um. There's a couple of reasons. So one of them, um, I'm kind of a sentimental guy. And when drivers were not performing, I held on to them for a little too long, um, making excuses for them. So that's one of the things for sure, hanging on to dud drivers. But 
Another thing is, uh, at the time, these trucks just weren't moving. Uh, we had mm-hmm. some unassigned runs, and, and at the, the climate where we were at the moment, trucks weren't moving. So we'd go four or five days with an unassigned run, and it would still just be sitting there. And, uh, you know, I'd get a call from from you and Darius, Darius specifically, and he'd be like, hey, is that truck moving? Knowing that. <laughs> Knowing that he's looking at the Omni tracks and the truck hasn't moved in five days. <laughs> I'm like, no, nah, man, we can't get these trucks to move at all. So uh, we moved them to a spot where they would make a lot more money. And, you know, like you guys were saying, cutting your losses. Wasn't it our second go around? Um, I think we had some so- overlapping go arounds with different sets of runs, but yeah. All right. So, and that happens, you know, and I think what I've learned from that experience is you want, if you're going to be buying unassigned runs, paying money for them, it's making sure those runs run smoothly. It's, it's checking those settlement statements and we do a lot of going back to see how they run. Um, and, and with the understanding that, you know, if things get slow, then those are the first runs that may not run very successfully. And so, um, I think, you know, luckily it, I think you financially did very well on that deal, John, if, if I, you know, can speak for you. Yeah. And so it worked out. Um, and so, you know, it's a couple of years later and all of a sudden you decide to get back into FedEx. So what in the world are you buying now? Yeah. Well, it started when we went to Vegas, um, we went to Vegas for the route consultants conference. Oh and yeah, just, you were there. You were there too. Yeah, I kind of just wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I like Vegas. I like oh, Vegas. Man. Um, Sorry, Darius, we missed so, you. So yeah, you, you were missed. But we we. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think you just wanted. <laughs> Speaking of Vegas, that's um that's our oh, second day. That's our meeting on the second day. Um, it was it was very informative. We got to talk a lot about the industry and mm-hmm. the important things related to line hall and other things. Those are those Don't are all hurt your eyes. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> those are so those are line hall contractors. I thought that was a diversity meeting. I'm sorry. <laughs> so um continue, John. Yeah, yeah. So uh in Vegas, I think I was just invited along because I was I was looking kind of lonely when you were talking about it and maybe you needed another person to talk FedEx to everybody else but we ended up running into somebody um you know we kept seeing them in some of the sessions and finally started talking to them so it just led into a good opportunity to get some dedicated team runs in Georgia mm-hmm. so that's what I'm into right now um so you, and obviously I've been we watching through this process for the last month. You are, huh, God, you're, you would be running this week, but you're not because of the most random reason ever. Why are you not, why are your trucks not running right now? Uh, so there's a, <laughs> the IRS, um, they're upgrading their system from, I want to say it was like December 20th to January when is it 12th they're upgrading one of their systems so uh the 2290s the highway vehicle usage tax um you're no longer there's a big like blackout period where fedex can't check their status uh and this is all you know what i'm led to believe from all the research we've done but um so we're just waiting on these we're waiting for the irs to open so fedex can check the 2290s electronically and you know normally you can get your 2290 in 90 seconds but um, not right now yep and just one of those random little you know nuances that nobody could have expected so you got you know rel trucks your big beautiful max that are just sitting there mm-hmm. um, and can't run so hopefully this week knock on everything um we get that moving christian you were talking about some title problems uh I could have answered some title questions for you from today. It's all right. Got it covered. John, though, you, so you did it, like you obviously did this before with Rick and Darius. Is there anything you do differently this time? Um, 
yeah be a lot more be a lot more hands-on um just obsess over everything i remember when rick started this almost 10 years ago you know you couldn't have a conversation with him without him spacing off and thinking about something else for a few minutes um and it was he was obsessing with everything fedex day and night um to get him you know all to get him to this point which is great um but uh, what it shows is that you yourself, everybody that wants to get into this needs to do the same thing. Um, you, you've got to have the onus uh, on yourself instead of somebody else to learn everything about this. Yeah. Um, lots of obsession. Uh, that's for sure. You, John, I think for, you know, for the new contractors out there, just getting started, like the last week, <laughs> we had an exciting little turn of events, right? Um, yeah. So John calls me and he's like, oh, yeah, hey, remember those runs we bought? Um, well, they're changing one. Walk me through that, like through your your thought process and, and how they dropped that bomb on you. Yeah, we we had a little somebody pulled the fire alarm on us the other day. Um, one of the terminal managers emailed me and said, hey, this this team run that you've you've been obsessing over and that you're you're making all these financial plans around and um, building a business around. We're going to change it to a dedicated solo instead. <laughs> Okay, so the first one they drop on you is like, okay, the first run that they they wanted, they changed basically a, we were had a team that was buttheading with a solo and they wanted to reverse it. So now solo is buttheading with a team and we have the solo. What mm -hmm. was the first like mileage they proposed? The original mileage that we had was maybe 5,000 or so for the week for that team. And what they dropped on us was something around like 360 or 380 a night. Something like that, right? Yeah, like that's not a run you enjoy owning. Three, eight, you know, it's it's a good run, make money on the run, but to give up like that that team run, um, that's rough. Yeah. So, luckily, spoke to a couple really cool people, um, had some conversations, and then today, what's the mileage on the new run or the new butthead location they come up with? Uh, it's like 608 or 615 for the night, something like that. Really so a monster, a monster solo run. And that's one of those things where, you know, recruiting retention on that solo run is going to be a lot easier. Um, so maybe giving up a couple of dollars to gain some variety uh, in that business and flexibility. Hey, guys, mm -hmm. come do this team run for us for a couple months and oh look at this dedicated run that we have you know that the solo run hey you can that'll be yours one day you know we're doing more of that so um i certainly think that this is a win for for the business would you just crack open bro another reason, guys also not mm. sponsored but looking forward to it not very, sponsored. Yeah, very true uh, mission uh, ultimates Rick, you might know this is, does that happen often like does fedex just change <laughs> So it's funny, right? Um, no, it doesn't happen that often. We've experienced it. Um, but hopefully Alan uh, comes on tonight. He's also kind of a couple weeks ahead of John. He had the same thing happen to him, and it ended up working better for him as well just because the needs changed for that particular run. So for both of them, before they actually close the business and finish the tractor files, they are you know, upgrading those those runs to something better, more mileage, more money. And and no, but I'd love to see it happen more often with, with my business, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, and depending on who you're talking to and depending on where that terminal's at, you know, someone might find that run way more desirable. Oh, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, I completely agree. When we were in Woodbridge, it was like, I remember people just talk shit to you like, like, ah, you got a team run? All oh, my runs are dedicated. Dedicated AM. That, that was a huge deal. Dedicated AM. You got all that nighttime shit. I'm dedicated AM. Because AM at that time in, in Woodbridge was like mainline stuff, you know, 600 mile one clip, you know, uh, butt head, excuse me, 300 something miles there, 300 something miles back. 
660 miles a day, Monday through Friday. Nighttime was like a lot of this herky jerky stuff, you know, um, getting people where they want to get miles, even though it was dedicated. It might be dedicated 400 miles a night, but dedicated 660 miles during the day. And I just remember that the shit people used to talk about, oh, I'm dedicated AM. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, and I mean, is it, that's not that. I mean, there's certain places, it all depends on the hub. It's money tied in with consistency of the run, you know, like how easy is this run to own? I see some people buying these businesses that just, they may look really good on paper, but I look at it and I'm like, well, shit, like that's really going to be a really miserable business to own just based on the timing, based on how, where the runs goes versus something that may make a little less money, but it, it runs, you know, consistent, consistently and, um, and smoothly. So when, when that happened, who did you go to? Like, who's your first contact? BDS um, or? My first contact was Rick. <laughs> <laughs> What do I do? Yeah. yeah. But then, then we, you know, we could have just rolled over and taken that run and we would have never known any different. But uh, having the relationship with the terminal manager, even right off the bat, I haven't even ran yet, but having the relationship with him, Rick and I called him up and we hashed it out and he moved some things around. And, and it was just, you know, um, I think there was a reasonableness to it. Mm -hmm. It was like, I don't know who's on the other end of that run but they're getting hooked up like they're, you know, they won the lottery. Like they had a, you know, a little solo run that turned into this nice, big, juicy, dedicated run, um, dedicated team run. And so I felt like it was an arbitrary place and where they put the, um, that butthead location. And if we just moved it up a tiny bit, you know, it would be a little more reasonable and would make, take the sting out of, you know, losing that, that run. And, um, and it worked out. So I think a reasonableness prevailed and we had a, a great uh, line hall manager to, to bounce that off of. And, you know, something happened. I don't know who, like how that ended up working out, but you know, the call today um, seemed to indicate that it went very successfully. Oh, that happened today. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, you're busy having your executive lunches, you know, South Jersey taking political meetings. We're making big, big things happen. Oh man. I'm good for you. Good for you, John. <laughs> as as a new contractor, John, like it's been a while, right? But you've seen this happen, but now it's a lot more involved. Like you're a lot more involved financially, right? Like you've got a huge chunk um, of your family's uh, cash flow tied up into this business now. What keeps you like, what are you nervous about? What keeps you up at night when you're like, oh my God, this is all going to ruin me. What's it become? So what's it because of uh, man everything everything all at once um literally everything all at once i can't pick a thing but um the safety these guys making a mistake um not preparing themselves for the runs appropriately it's the car that sees a you know, the random car that sees a dollar signs when they see a, a semi driving down the road and they stomp their brakes in front of it and the dude just disappears, gets deleted. Um, Big it, yeah, man, it's uh, it's losing the runs because they're not running because of points. And then everything that I bought just goes up in flames. Um, it, you know, none of this stuff is is possible, but all of these things, um, it's my trucks going down because some random thing happens with 2023 max and they all have to go in the shop at the same time. So what do you do to make yourself sane again? Uh, like four or five Tylenol PMs. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, you know, just like everything, man, uh, prepare. You just have to prepare for everything. Um, you hire extra dudes. So when somebody calls out, um, it doesn't affect you as much. You try to grab a spare truck to sit in the lot to have just empty equipment sitting there. Um, you. Hell no, you don't. <laughs> you, you got that, you you got that truck. If you're not going to run it, you call us. We'll run it for you. Don't you worry. Get a you, little temp number going. You hammer the dudes for safety over and over and over again. And if you smell anything wrong with them about their safety, if they feel like, feel like they're brushing you off for a little something, 
you know, you can find another dude that will do the same thing, but be safe. Yep. What What about y'all, Darius, Rick? What keeps y'all up at night? Same um, stuff? Yes. Um, different. A little different. Um, ultimately, you want to be responsible, right? Your mind's always working. You always have decisions you have to make. And um, I personally get decision fatigue because it's like, if I do this, then this will happen. Or, you know, what happens if I do this? So... Um, you try to eliminate, you know, as much as you can. I mean, there's no secret. And on our other business, we had a fatality, which is, you know, one of probably the worst things that we ever thought could have could have occurred. And um, that wasn't under the FedEx flag. And we came out on the other side of it pretty good. You know, the logs were in order. The hiring practices were in order. The guy did everything right. The truck was in order. All the inspections um, cleared. So, as much as I hate to say it, you know, um, FedEx runs a really tight ship and they gave us the blueprint and the, the training wheels, if you will, to kind of survive that. So in case you have a nuclear event, you know, mows down 10, 10 people, they're going to go back to all that stuff that you never thought was important. First advantage, vehicle yeah. record, DQ files, random drug tests. Did you do all those things? And, and we can confidently say we did. So, the, you know, when this happened, we talked to Rick, me and Rick spoke and our internal safety guy who works for us. Um, Rick said, you know what? You know, we just happened to be that ves the vessel for that guy. He was gone. The Lord was coming for him. We just happened to be his vessel. Um, so that's it. You know, control what you control can control and don't obsess on the things that you can't. That's why I think. Build, build a system or have somebody or pay somebody to build you a system um, and stick to it and, and be very anal in those early days about making sure that that system is stuck to so that if, God forbid, worst case scenario happens, you're protected. Your business is protected. Um, you know, don't pierce the corporate veil. Everyone's got to start a corporation, right? Understand how money can move from point A to point B but it can't move from you know D to C because of you know the the uh, I guess a lawyer being able to come after your personal assets if something does happen. So a lot of that stuff we didn't know. I mean, we had you know Darius and I were two you know cops. We decided to start this you know hustle on the side, and we just learned all this as we went along. And and unfortunately, you know, we had some rough. Jeez. <laughs> We had an IRS issue those early years that almost destroyed us, but we climbed out of a lot of holes um, and, you know, are, are certainly much more educated because of it. So preparation um, in this business goes a long, long, if not most of the way, combined with a tiny little bit of luck. So, um, John, Darius, thank you guys very much. I know we will be seeing a lot more of both of you um, in the weeks to come. Um, Peace. Yep. Kisses. Peace yep. Um, so Super our good. final guests, I want to bring on um, Alan, who I just spoke about earlier. Alan and his partners, uh, Karen and Stephanie, are, are just getting started. I thought he'd be a, a phenomenal person to bring on, kind of talk to about getting running. And um, <laughs> oh, hell, hell yeah. I'm not family either, right? So you are now. Um, yeah. That's everything we've been through. So, Alan, what up, man? How's uh, how's life? Oh, it's been an interesting couple of days. So, uh, you know, on on top of uh, breakdown with my my breaks last night, I was on the phone with you quite a bit about it. How did how'd that end up? Well, it hasn't ended yet. So we got Fleetnet out there, and they fixed it. Okay, what was it? Was it the brake chamber? Um, I honestly, I don't know. I haven't got the report from them yet. Um, but they. Uh, according to my driver, the brakes were were shot. That's what she said that the, the mechanic said. So on they your, got on your new truck, it's not brand new. It's it's the one behind me here. The uh, oh, they still the go through liner. service, especially when you buy it from a dealership. Yep, you would think. Okay, so but it gets better, right? Um, she was able to take it on a shuttle last night, which mm -hmm. is good. She got some miles. Okay, <clears throat> and. Uh, the, the mobile mechanic came by today and was looking at it, and they found 
I forget what they called it. It was a, a, a valve on the airline going into the backside of the cab that was, had a malfunction. So they repaired that. When they repaired that, they found the brake chambers on two of the axles on the passenger side were leaking. So they were able to repair one of those, but they ran out of time today. So it's still out of order right now. And it's, it'll be fixed tomorrow. FedEx trucking. Yes. Welcome to trucking. Um, yeah, exactly. So let me ask you this. Yeah. <laughs> as you just, as of all the days, I, I'm very interested, right? So we've known each other since what? May, June. We probably first. Somewhere around there, yeah. I, I called you from the Whataburger line getting breakfast one morning. Oh, on Did Denver. You? On yeah. the Denver business. Yeah. What, um, why FedEx line haul? Like, how does, how did you, you know, <clears throat> you know, figure out that was where you wanted to put your time? There's a couple of things I've, I've done several, you know, what they call side hustles to, to make money. Um, I've had a decent career. I've been in project management for it for 28 years now. Uh, so, but never, never something to, to make me money, always something to make other people money. I ran across a guy when I bought a, a an excursion from him a couple of years ago, it was 2000, it was 2020. It was uh, like February, 2020. I was coming back through Utah and I'd gotten off to go somewhere and I saw the excursion and I just sold my old one. And so I, I ended up buying it from him, long story short. And he had a really nice spread. He had nice trucks. I'm like, what? Oh, he had every single record that uh, of every maintenance or, or repair on that truck. And it was, it was a 2000, three i think it is um and i'm like what do you do for a living and he said oh i i run all of the all the trailers that are fedex i run them from vegas up to to salt lake city i'm like really he said yeah he said all the all the, that the, the people that pull those trailers aren't fedex employees they're they're owners of these trucks I'm like, wow that's really cool and then fast forward to the end of 2021 a friend of mine that i worked with at usaa quit he, he resigned and reached out to me a couple months later and, and uh, we went to lunch and I asked him, where'd you go? Where are you doing now? And he said, actually, I run a trucking business. I'm like, really? He goes, well, it's, I'm a FedEx contractor. I said, I've heard of that before. And so I started looking into it. That was probably March of last year. And I just started digging into it really heavy. And I talked to, I talked to all the people on, on the um, biz, what is it? Biz buy, sell or whatever it is. Biz quest, biz buy, sell. Yep. Yeah, Mark, there was a guy up there in, in the Northeast, Mark, somebody or other. Um, I talked to him. He was he was uh, a shark, but uh, that's just my own opinion. <laughs> he, he was a fast talker, but uh, I just kept getting more and more information on it. And so mm -hmm. I got to a point where I was ready to pull the trigger. I just didn't have enough personal money that I had, you know, that I could just throw into it. And, and thank God, because I'd be nuts right now if I didn't have a partner. So my wife, Stephanie, and I reached out to a longtime friend of ours and uh, Karen, and uh, we talked to her about it. And she's like, well, yeah, I don't know. It sounds too good to be true. So I was able to talk her into coming down to Dallas. She lives up in Ohio. I was able to get her to come to Dallas for the, the Line Hall Summit last, what is that, July, end of July. And yes. uh, for her, that's what solidified everything for sure. But for me, it stopped becoming this, pie in the sky thing like so many other things i had i had experienced in the past and it became something that was real it was real people it wasn't wasn't people that were you know just truckers it was all different kinds of people and i knew that i could i could do it too and so that was it that was it the, it was the mexican food definitely no <laughs> kidding me what that's horrible mexican food it that died. food that night was great the food that night was great or it was the tequila I don't, do, I don't do tequila, man. Makes me spicy sick. margarita, spicy tequila, whatever. Those were good. Whiskey, um, I'll do. What, can I ask what what convinced you to go with and do it with Rick? Just out of curiosity. Um, you know what? Um, I didn't feel like he's. Well, this is a PG. I didn't feel like he was trying to blow smoke up where it didn't belong. It's oh, very PG mm -hmm. of you. So, yes, yes. Um, yeah, I, I had talked to several guys, probably three or four guys. Um, right. And, and they all, to me, it felt like they were playing a part. You know, some of them were gruff, the trucker kind, and they were just gruff. Some of them were like, oh, yeah, I'll help you. I'll hold your hand the whole way through. And and 
I didn't feel that way with Rick. Matter of fact, I I kind of didn't believe his post about the the runs in in Denver because it just it just didn't make sense why anybody would want to sell it for less than what was it less than one times I think it was when that one was posted. Everybody else that, is doing it for five times, right? That deal needs its whole show. I'm going to do a whole hour on that particular deal <laughs> and going through that because that so, was rough. Um, I call them. I'm like, so what's the catch, right? What this can't possibly be true. What are you really selling? And uh, he's like, no, really, that's what I'm selling. And so we talked back and forth for a while. And, and I just I needed to get to know him a little bit better. I needed to talk to him a few times. And, and um, at first, you know, Rick can come off a little salesy. But, uh, <laughs> but when you get past that, and you know what? Honestly, let, let me be like, Totally transparent here. And I'm That's sorry, sorry. if you your cover, Rick. I, I apologize. We were at the Line Hall Summit, and he just happened to be at the hotel we were in because we didn't go to the hotel that where, where the event was or close to it. We were like a mile away or something, right? And he just happened to be there talking to two other guys one morning. I'm like, hey. And so we ended up giving him a ride back to the show that morning or, or whatever it was, and, and we started talking about things that had nothing to do with FedEx. And that got us into a really deep um, discussion on faith. And uh, that's just something that is, that is, that's what, that's why I wake up in the morning, right? This FedEx mm -hmm. stuff is great and it makes money and I love it. It's, yep. it's challenging. My wife is about to pull her hair out when the truck broke down last night. She's like, oh, this stuff has to happen all at once. I said, this is what makes you great, right? So... <laughs> 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 Alan Walker calluses. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, if, if it wasn't hard, everybody would do it. And if, if it was so, hard. All right. So you've great. been running. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, so to answer that last question, I got into a real, honest, sincere conversation with Rick about things that mattered, not money, not FedEx, not, you know, sports, not, it was, a, it was a sincere heart to heart discussion. And we were both able to be very, transparent and and forthcoming even though we didn't necessarily align 100 percent um we were both willing to hear each other out and and want to know more about the other person's perspective and i have a great deal of respect for that so i knew at that point whatever concern i had about all these fedex guys that are selling runs i didn't have that with rick anymore there yeah. like it was real so what's right, the next so question i was good all right so you you've been running pretty recently you got a breakdown are you still mm -hmm. excited about it Am I still? Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. I'm also scared to death, right? Because let me tell you why. <laughs> yeah, but you like that. <laughs> so, no. Yeah, I do. I, so it's, it's funny. Um, gosh, we, are you sure we only have a couple minutes left? But I can go on an hour. Um, so we started We started with um, yes. a really good deal on two solo PM runs out of uh, Marietta, right? Going One going down to Tifton, Georgia. The other going across the border to Tuskegee, right? Um, not, nothing's going to break my bank open. Right. But, uh, but the price was right. It got us in the door. And as far as I was concerned, if I can get something, my foot in the door or something to stop that door from slamming on me, I can blow it wide open. I'm not worried about it. And everybody just, oh yeah, you're so funny. Well, whatever. But we got three trucks, right. Took forever to get the trucks and get them oh, approved. God, yeah. And I'll tell you that the trick for us, and I don't think we got it right, so I'm hoping to get it right this next time, is getting the trucks approved and the drivers approved and everybody lined up at the same time, right? So that <laughs> as, as the, the the drivers are sliding into home, the trucks are there to catch them and take them back to first base again, right? Oh, so, I love the analogy, yeah. Uh, oh, my God, it was awful. But it was great. I mean, it was like such a uh, moving a thousand parts just to get everything. Anyway, so... We got our drivers approved and our trucks are supposed to be approved within 48 hours. It took a week, literally seven days. And the day that we got both trucks approved to run the, the assigned runs, both of my drivers quit that morning because they found other jobs. They'd been waiting a week and weren't getting paid, yeah. right? Yeah. I had no yep. money to pay because I wasn't getting paid either. Yep. So that was like a, a oh shoot moment. Um, and uh, oh, sorry, guys. You're already been through it, damn. Oh, yeah. 
All right, so, Alan, we're, uh, we're bumping up against time. Um, yes, I, we'll talk again. You're going to, the next time you come on, I want you to tell me about how a guy with two dedicated solo PM runs calls me one day and is like, oh yeah, by the way, I have four unassigned team runs that I'm going to be starting in the next couple of weeks. Um, <laughs> on next week's episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I'm calling you. Yeah, we'll talk. Oh God. Five. So yeah, that was my blowing the door wide open. Right. If, if there's any group of people that can accomplish it it's certainly your crew um I so wish i believed you as much as you believe it <laughs> we'll talk we'll talk we it's hiring there's lots of people that will help you um in this process and make this move and you're gonna have to we're gonna have to talk to some vendors um especially when it comes to recruiting so all right um everybody alan first off thank you so much yeah. um this journey watching you in this journey has been extremely fun um to darius and john um, thank you. And to everyone else, um, I've gotten a lot of text. I think there were some technical issues with the show, switching the times. We'll figure all that out. But I think tonight went, went, went reasonably smooth. What do you think, Christian? I think it was awesome. This, this is what, this is what the space needs, man. This is great. Yep, for sure. Um, a very, very Special thanks to my social media, you know, vice president. He just got promoted. Uh, Vin, this went perfect or much better than we expected. Thank you very, very much. Great yeah, job. Yeah, Vin. Nice work. Everybody, um, thank you for joining us at Around the Hub. This is only week one. Week two will be next Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And we will send be sending out a lot of information um, ahead of time with then with with next week. Um, this is exciting and this is just week one. So please join us again. Thank you guys very much. Awesome. Thanks, guys. See you all. See you. Alan. This is around the hub. <laughs> um, yeah, Ben, you can cut us now because now it's just getting super awkward. <laughs> Play it out. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs>